merge or not? All right, well, let's worry about that in a second. First things first. You're fine. Um, we'll take the village back this turn. Let's take a look at our profits, shall we? We have a profit of 1100 and um, as according to our thing, if profit is over 1500 it's not. If profit is less than 1500 and army upkeep is more than 12.5, everything we make goes to cultural development. What is our military upkeep? Uh, where, where, army upkeep is 11,556. So it's less than 12,000. Everything goes to military development. Okay, so um, of our 1174, all of it is going to military development. So 1174. Yep. Ooh, okay. <laughs> so um, I, considering the re most recent developments, I've decided to call an emergency war council with as many advisors as I could pull together, which is not bad. It's four. I have our advisor of treasury, Sergio, our advisor of military development, Galagoth, our advisor of diplomacy, Inferno Canuck, and our advisor of grand strategy, Rebel. Um, you all are watching on the stream, so most of you are aware of the situation already. We have... Um, Ker Andras under siege again. The army doesn't look that bad. Um, it, I, I'm pretty sure if it was just that army, I wouldn't have trouble taking it. The problem, the concern of mine, is that they have all these armies right here that they are marching this direction to, my guess would be, merge. And if they merge those armies, then I'm going to be worried about being able to defend Ker Andras. Um, we also have a massive army with, what is that, three stars? Four stars. A four-star general... And another army right next to it also has a four-star general. So we have a massive army headed to either Eastern Osgiliath or Karandros. We don't know yet. But the point is, um, this is not good. <laughs> if they attack Eastern Osgiliath, we can probably hold. If they all concentrate on Karandros, especially since I can't get any more troops in there, we might be in trouble. Yeah, even if just the guys in the north just concentrate on it, we I don't think we can hold it. Yeah. Um... I do have, the thing is, I do have reinforcements. I have reinforcements in Minas Tirith, another uh, unit of Fountain Guards and two Spear Militia, as well as two Archers. The problem is, they can't get into the city now. Uh, unless we can somehow raise the siege. We um, need to know the unit makeups for the besieging force. Well, we can do that. We have enough spies to try and figure that out. Um, if you just like the see army, some of the units just by clicking on them. That's true. That's true, too. I didn't think about that. Uh, not you. Right. Yeah, we just need to hope there's no Orocs. I'm gonna stick you! Or trolls. We have really Orc up. Maulers, Orc Raiders. Please, Rebel, don't even bother talking about those trolls if they're even one in dead. <laughs> <laughs> orc Band, Orc Raiders, Orc Band, Orc Band, Orc Band. Okay, that's manageable. Now, what I'm worried, wondering is, and I was going to talk to you guys about this, the last siege we had normally we're supposed to be able to uh, take one-on-one -on -one, we're supposed to be able to take Mordor's units pretty easily but in that siege they were some of their units were wiping the floor with some of my units in a stand-up fight it was bad unit placements we uh, no the units on the wall though a spear unit versus an orc unit on the wall should be doing better and they got annihilated that has that nothing to do with the is of the upgrades on Mordor's units. That's what I'm I worried about. So. Right. That itself has nothing to do with unit placement. They straight up lost a face on fight, which makes me worried because I was under the impression we could win those kind of fights. Um, no, we yeah. can win. The problem you've, you the problem you've got is not so much unit placement, but a number of units that Mordor's gonna send at once, but also the upgrades that those units are gonna have. Right. So um, that's why yeah, I'm. I'm so your, your troops are our troops are intrinsically better, but if Mordor Mordor's troops have got better upgrades than ours, then they're going to win. Which is why I'm worried down. because I was under the impression that they have lots of troops, but really crappy ones without upgrades. If they have lots of troops and upgraded troops, uh, we've got trouble. 
So um, should this should I be expecting this? Should I be expecting to not be able to take their their troops on uh, one on one? <laughs> what you need to be careful of is before the battle, or is to always check the of the armies. In my opinion, anyway, and actually work out right what are these what what are, what are, what upgrades have these units got so what units have they actually got what do i need to be careful of and what upgrades have have they got okay so it does show their then, upgrades well, here no. it looks like the only upgrades these guys have is one two three of them have one thing of experience so uh, i'm assuming it would show if they had better armor and better weapons correct yes yes yeah. it would, yes okay. it would show so that's but not, what you then need to do especially in open battles sort of in siege battles as well, more on their melee units in that case, but in your battles is to actually check what units they've got specifically and what upgrades they've got on them, and then plan your battle tactics around that rather than just deploying straight off as I think somewhere that needs to be looked at. Right, I see what you're saying. Um, so instead of assuming it's a uniform army, maybe concentrate more on their heavily armed units or upgraded units. Okay, so yeah. suggestions? Well, Oh yes. Thing, yeah, I, I I have a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Sergio and I uh, are on the same page, especially when it comes to a defensive battle, and especially when it comes to a, a siege. You really want to try and funnel them in, and have them just attack a one spot in the bottleneck. A bottleneck specifically. Normally, your gatehouse works as a bottleneck, so normally what you want to try to do is prevent. Of course, they have one ladder and one you know, ram, of course, right? right? So either have the ram destroyed and then they all have to come up a ladder, which will be oh, easy to bottleneck, or, um, well, that's prefer preference number one. And preference number two is if they bring down the gate, just create a nice little pocket for them to kind of just go in and you can attack them from all all three sides. Right. But, uh, yeah. Okay, well, that's and that was that was my big mistake in the last siege is that I tried to do that, but I had my units not prepared in time, so they got in further than I wanted them to. Um, yeah. So that's true. Um, and and Sergio did bring it up uh, some time ago that I've never actually tried this before. Is that uh, right to send a cavalry unit out to go take out one of their siege engines before they get up there? Um, unfortunately, we have one horse yes. unit of thirty-seven people, and that's it. Yeah, that's. That's, one thing to note. Suicide. What rebel? Actually, one thing to note. I was watching uh, another LP called Cold Death. He does Third Age Total War LPs, or at least some of them. Mm -hmm. um, and he, with I can't remember who he's playing as. I can't specifically remember who he's playing as. But with one cavalry unit was his general unit. And he sent them out, and he actually kept the uh, enemy ram. All they had was a single ram, and he actually kept attacking the ram and what happens when you attack a unit that's holding the siege equipment is they will actually drop the equipment um, so if you send them out say to the ladders keep their uh, unit on the ladders occupied so that they didn't actually put the ladders to the wall um, so they just drop the ladder but they and can then just you pick can it back up can't they? they're not the gatehouse what's that? would they pick up the ladders again if you leave them alone? or once they drop them they drop them? If, if you leave them alone, then yes, they will go and pick up the ladder again, or another unit will come and pick it up. But all you need to do is actually attack them. So all you need to do is actually hit them and then get off again. Oh, I see, I see. So hit them and then just continuously do hit and runs like that with the horse unit. Yeah, and then in that case, the AI will drop the siege equipment and try and focus on your well, cavalry unit. That if does that does make sense. The one the one problem is that that's very risky to do with your general unit. It is and by the end of it he had from seventeen men in a general unit down to the general himself and the general died. Um and that but Hello? Hang on. Where were we? Um Yeah, so uh before you guys got cut off one of you guys were saying something about the risks of sending the general out there? Yeah. 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 It is a risk, obviously, but, you know, it's a risk between possibly losing a general or and losing, losing an a entire city. town. That is true. Indeed. So, um... 
do you go on, sir? I was gonna say so. Um, I'm I'm assuming that we just suggest that uh, we let them do whatever they want to do and do our best to hold this, and hope they just attack before they all group together. Correct? There isn't really yes. anything else we can yeah. from what I can tell. There's nothing else you can, yeah. All right. Um, well, there there are other options theoretically, but not uh, not smart ones. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could try and, and maybe take a force from Eastern North Gilead to try and raise the siege with these people, but that would not be uh, advisable. Hang on a second, folks. Okay, um, no, uh, what I was suggesting was that there, there was an option to maybe um, attack and raise this siege so that we can get more reinforcements in there, but with this army down here, I don't know if that's a good idea. You guys, mm. you guys still with me? Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm not saying it was the smartest move. I thought I would just suggest it because that was technically one of our options. It is an option. Do we have any reinforcing, any potential reinforcements uh, anywhere else? Like, no. any reasonably sized units? Not necessarily. Oh, another, another option I just realized that we do have is we can take a force from Eastern Osgiliath and attack these guys before they merge. Um, but once again, that also would leave Eastern Osgiliath less defended. A large stack near it. Yeah. Well, yes. Yes. I, I, think, I think that option would have been more viable if we didn't have a large stack near it. <laughs> um, no, the only other sizable force we have at all is down here... Uh, taking the that's about to take the fishing island. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you didn't have to. Right. Okay. Um. Yeah. The only other sizable force we have is uh the army on the boat about to take the fishing village. Which they couldn't really which get there in time to do anything. And is a real unit because it's only got three full units. Really. Right. Um. We do have in mo uh, uh minus Tirith. We do have. Uh, I just recruited. Two spearmen and a fountain guard, but again, there's not much they can do. They can they can merge with these archers, which I was about to have them do, but that's it. <laughs> they can't get into the city or anything. They can't even uh, cross it, I believe. How close can you get that other that army that's just there? Which army? Uh, the two archer units, I think it is. Just outside of Carondros. Close to Carondros? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, two I, units. I can get them all the way up there. Mm. Right. Because if they're it there, they can well. reinforce during battle. That is true. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, you mean get them, get them in there before the bad guys get in there? That might be possible. There'd also be a decent reinforcing force if your units got... Uh, and they can flank the, the orcs as they try to get in. Indeed, that's also another possibility, actually sending them outside the walls. That is true. Well, right. Um, well, they wouldn't be able to get in the walls, so I guess our options would be either try and get them in the castle before the uh, or through another gate. Um, because this has more mm. than one gate. We could just send them in through a side gate. Um, or yeah. because I don't know how effective archers would be at flanking. <laughs> I mean, they could fire arrows. I'm not saying they wouldn't be effective, but they're not spearmen. They'd be pretty deadly. Yeah. They would be pretty deadly, especially from behind if you sent them around yeah. the walls. Uh, archers just hitting to... orcs from behind are very <laughs> okay. effective. Okay. Right. Well, uh, we can yeah. definitely. So just, uh, Kerandros may not have a gate uh, because it's a fortress, so it's possible that w the only option we have is actually sending them around okay, well, the walls to attack. Either way, we'll bring them up there, and then uh, you know what? Why don't we go ahead and bring this uh, the other units up there just in case they don't attack this turn, and then if they attack next turn, we can get them involved too. There's no, I don't see any reason, any reason not to. So let's try and. Uh because then we could have a really uh, a decent flanking. So we'll get them up there. Today, 